everyone. So uh, if you have missed the lesson today, uh, this is what we have discussed. So we are looking at light and we said yesterday that we can get a umbra or a penumbra, which is basically just a full shadow or a half shadow. And these are terms that we use in um, astrophysics, astronomy, geography a lot. Okay, but you still need to know about that because that is how light actually interacts um, with objects to form shadows, full shadows or half shadows. I would like you just to quickly have a listen to this. Just like to make sure that the computer sound is on. Earth. This shadow consists of two parts, the umbra and the penumbra. The umbra is a total shadow. To observers on Earth within the narrow strip of land over which the umbra passes, the sun appears to be completely covered by the moon. Those observers see a total eclipse. The penumbra is a partial shadow. To observers on Earth who are within the penumbra, the sun appears to be partially covered by the moon, so those observers see a partial eclipse. The Earth revolves around the sun in a slightly elliptical orbit. As the Earth orbits, its distance from the Sun changes slightly during the year, causing a change in the apparent size of the Sun to observers on Earth. The Moon revolves around the Earth in a slightly elliptical orbit as well, which makes the appearance of the Moon change somewhat during the course of a month. When the Earth is at its nearest distance to the Sun, and when the Moon is at its farthest distance from the Earth, observers within the Moon's umbra see a ring of Sun around it, this phenomenon is called an annular eclipse. Okay, so basically what you should know is that an umbra forms when you have a point source of light, like a light bulb, a round point source of light traveling through a pinhole and the light will scatter if there's an object, a shadow will form and it will form just one full shadow. But if you have a more extended source of light and that shines through a pinhole and uh, onto an object, it will form a shadow on the other side where um, you now have multiple rays uh, of light coming in and you've got this overlap of um, the uh, light rays forming a double shadow, so to speak, a dark shadow and two lighter shadows, and we call them umbra and penumbras. You need to know about transmission, absorption, and reflection, and that uh, when light travels um, through a medium, it interacts with the particles of that medium. Uh, not all materials allow light through them, some completely absorb light, and you need to know what and how that happens, okay? Uh, light can also be fully reflected by objects. But first, we need to just discuss what is the difference between transparent and translucent materials versus opaque materials. Now, transparent means all light passes through the material, like through a window, glass window pane. Translucent materials allow some of the light to pass through them, like sunglasses, it'll block out something like UV light, but it will let the other light through. Opaque materials will allow no light to pass through them, and therefore they just look uh, dull, okay, not shiny. Now, four things happen with light when it interacts with materials. It can be reflected, transmitted, absorbed, or scattered. So we have these four phenomena, phenomena, reflection, transmission, absorption, scattering. Reflection happens often um, with very smooth surfaces like metals, surfaces that are shiny, mirrors that are shiny, okay, glass, which is very smooth. And uh, the law of reflection still holds. So 
the angle of incidence will equal the angle of reflection. If you draw a normal line here, which is perpendicular to the surface, the angle of incidence is between the incident ray, this incoming ray, and the normal. It will be the same size as the reflected angle, which is between this reflected ray and the normal, this 90 degree line to the surface. Also, the reflected incident and uh, rays and the normal are all in the same plane. Okay, so transmission happens when light travels through a medium, mostly uh, allowing all of the light through, and it interacts with the particles to refract, and then when it comes out, it will follow the same path as it came in with. Certain materials will absorb light. A lot of materials, in fact, will absorb uh, some of the light, if not most of the light, um, and will then just convert the light energy into other forms of energy, mostly into heat energy, kinetic energy as well, and other forms of energy. But uh, it doesn't mean that if light is absorbed, that all the photons and that light energy just, just uh, get destroyed and there's no more energy. So it just gets transformed into different forms of energy. Scattering happens when the light uh, that came in then travels in a different direction when it goes out. Okay, I would like you just to have a listen to this as well, which explains really nicely with gummy berries, how and what's the difference between absorption, reflection and transmission. Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is AP Physics Essentials video 118. It's on light absorption, reflection and transmission. And in this picture, I have a green laser that I'm shining at gummy bears that have different colors. And you can see that most of the light is being transmitted through the gummy bears. We get some reflection off the surface and off this background, but we also see a lot of absorption. That red gummy bear is absorbing that green light. What's interesting is you could have a red laser and a green gummy bear and you'd see the same type of absorption. And so when light moves from one medium to another, in the example I gave a second ago, it was moving from air to the gummy bear itself, one of three things can happen. First of all, we can have reflection. That's when the light bounces off the surface. We could also have absorption, and that's going to be when the light is actually converted to another form of energy. You know this occurs when that light simply disappears as it enters another medium, or it could be transmitted. In other words, it can be granted safe passage through the medium itself. Sometimes it'll be refracted, but we'll talk about that in a later video. Now, what's interesting is you can have different wavelengths of light interacting in a different way with the medium itself. Some could be reflected, absorbed, or transmitted, and that's where we get the color of objects and, and what colors they actually have. So let's start with reflection. If we were to look at this leaf, what color of light is being reflected from the surface of the leaf? Well, it's green. If it, since it occurs as green, we're getting a reflection of that green light. So reflection, remember, is a bounce off of the surface. Now what's interesting is on that bounce, if you draw a normal, which is going to be a line that's perpendicular to the surface, as light is reflected, the angle it comes in at, we call that the angle of incidence, is always going to equal the angle of reflection. In other words, this angle right here is going to equal that angle right there. What if it comes straight in, then there's an angle of zero, and so it's going to bounce straight back. If we're looking at a mountain in the reflection of a lake, that's going to be reflection that's causing it. And so you know the mountain is not down in the lake, and so how did that image get to your eye? Well, the light from the top of the mountain is reflecting at an angle off of the surface of the water, and it's going to your eye. And so it appears as though it's down in the water, even though it's not. Absorption is different. Absorption is when the light hits the surface and is converted into some other form of energy. Generally, it's going to be heat. And so if we were to look at this leaf, for example, what light is being reflected? It's going to be the green light. And so what light is going to be absorbed? It's going to be the red light and the blue light that's being absorbed. And we can even look at an absorption spectrum of the leaf itself. There are two pigments in there, chlorophyll A and B. And what they do is they absorb a lot of that bluish purplish light. They absorb a lot of the reddish yellow light, but they don't absorb a lot in the green. And that's because the green is reflected back to us. Now what's neat is a leaf can actually make use of that energy to do photosynthesis. Now light can also be transmitted. That means that it goes from one medium to another and it just goes right through that medium. And so if we were to look on the underside of a leaf, we're going to see a lot of green light coming through, but also some of that blue and red light's going to make it through as well. And so some plants have evolved a barrier on the bottom. And so you'll see some leaves that on the bottom are reddish bluish, on the bottom are purple. And what they're doing is they're having that layer, so they're reflecting that 
back up through the leaf so they can get more of the energy out, out of the sunlight itself. And so if we look at this gummy bear experiment, so I'm shining the, the laser at the gummy bears, we can see all three of these occurring. And so if I were to say, where's the transmitted light? That's going to be on the top. Where would we look for the absorbed light? It's going to be on that surface. So right as it goes in, some of it is absorbed by the gummy bear itself. And then if we were to look at the reflected light, you can see the reflected light is going to be right here on the front of that gummy bear. It's bouncing back where it came from. And so if we continue the video and watch what happens, you can see each of those gummy bears are transmitting, absorbing a different amount. But when we get to the red, we see a bunch of reflection, a bunch of absorption, but not much transmission. And again, that's dependent upon the pigments and the chemicals that we have inside the gummy bears itself. And so did you learn to explain the behavior of light as it travels from one medium to another? Again, it can be reflected, it could be absorbed or transmitted, and I hope that was helpful. Lovely. So that explains the difference between absorption, reflection, and transmission. You need to know the difference between these and explain how that happens, please. So we get two types of reflection. We are used to just regular reflection of mirrors of light, light in mirrors, and we call that specular reflection, when all of the light bounces off um, in the same direction, um, uh, very, very orderly, okay, then it makes the surface appear shiny, okay. But if you have a rough surface, then what happens, the law of reflection still holds. So if you look at this ray on the far left, the blue one coming in, that's your incident ray, it will hit the surface right at the tip here of this irregular surface. If you draw a normal line to that surface, 90 degrees to it, the angle of reflection will still equal the angle of incidence. So it will reflect off this way. Let's follow the path of this last blue ray, incident ray coming in. Now it hits the surface, which is curved if you can see on this irregular surface, draw a normal line on it, and you'll see that the uh, incident angle is really small. So the reflected angle is also really small. So it will reflect almost directly upwards. And that just shows that all the reflected rays are scattering in different directions, which results in um, making this surface appear dull and not shiny because of diffuse reflection. Now, if we look at reflection in smooth, on smooth surfaces, then we look typically at a mirror, and this is what you should know about the image in the mirror, okay? Uh, number one, everything will be laterally inverted. That means um, if you have uh, something written on your t-shirt, that it will all be inverted left to right, okay? So instead of this reading left to right physics, it now reads right to left. Each letter has been left to right, meaning laterally inverted. The image is still upright. It's the same size as the object, but the image is as far behind in the mirror as the object is in front of the mirror. And these are the four properties of a plain mirror image. What are the applications of mirrors and reflection? Well, the most exciting one, of course, periscope. Periscopes um, allow you to see over barriers that you would normally not be able to see over if you just look and stand and look at it with your eyes. So how it works this is, of course, in a submarine, and it works like this. You've got uh, light traveling from an object into your periscope where you have two mirrors mounted at 45 degrees in the two corners, right? Top and bottom. So it will hit that mirror. Um, if you draw a normal line to this, the angle of incidence will be about, say, 45 degrees. And that means that the reflected ray will reflect also at 45 degrees off of this mirror. It will go down, hit a second mirror that is uh, tilted at 45 degrees, which will then direct the light directly into your eyes, and you can now see over barriers. That's a periscope. Absorption versus reflection of light. Okay, so many object contains atoms capable of either selectively absorbing, reflecting, or transmitting one or more frequency of light. The frequencies of light that become transmitted or reflected to our eyes will contribute to the color that we perceive and see that object to be. So if you have um, a piece of paper, for example, we don't know the color of it, 
the question is, can you tell the color of this paper if it gets illuminated with white light that contains all the colors of the rainbow, Roy orange, uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. This falls and hits the surface of this page. The paper is capable of uh, absorbing Roy birth. So it has absorbed all of the colors of white light except green. It then therefore reflects the green part of the spectrum and we see this object, this paper to be green. Look at example B, it's illuminated with Roy G. Berg, all the colors of white light, and now it falls onto the paper. The paper only absorbs Oi G. Berg without R. R does not therefore get absorbed by this paper, but it gets reflected. R gets reflected, that means this object is red. Again, we see objects specific color because it reflects that color back to our eyes. Okay, the seven colors of white light, which is Roy G. Berg, falls onto an object and only six of them are absorbed, but one color, one color of light is reflected back to your eye. Why are leaves green? Because they absorb red, orange, yellow, blue, indigo, and violet, and they use those colors of light to photosynthesize and use that energy to function and produce food. And it reflects green light back. It's sort of saying that green light is useless to our functioning to make food, right? And that's why all plants are green because they don't use the green light. They use the red part of the spectrum, which is the more heated part of the spectrum, that heat, to produce food in photosynthesis. And they use the blue part and yellow, the blue and, and purple and violet part with high amount of energy to also now convert uh, carbon dioxide and water into food, uh, car uh, carbohydrates and oxygen that we breathe in. And that is it for this lesson. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.